So this is the coffee jack. I got this a bit over a month ago and the packaging was nice, but I'm more concerned about how it performs in the technical specs. My aim is to look at this from a data standpoint and see how well it performs and compare it to my other devices, especially Compresso for travel, because that's how I would mainly be using this. So I'm gonna take a look at the coffee jack today, which is a small portable espresso machine. So I found it to be quite capable, even though there's a couple design aspects I don't like. So we'll start off with uh, just grinding coffee here. And while I'm grinding, I'll talk about the device itself. It has a filter basket that has more whole area than a precision basket, but there's a logo of a coffee bean at the center, which I didn't quite like because I feel like you're losing some area for extraction. But oddly enough, I've been able to get really good extractions from this machine. So I'm pretty sure it's because of the whole area. And I then replaced my previous travel machine, which was the Compresso. So here I'm, I'm using a 15 gram dose of a medium roasted coffee. And I distribute it with a little bit of a divot. And at the moment I'm using the tamper from the Compresso because that's the one that works here. So once I tamp it, um, I'll put the machine on and then pour in some hot water. So I did some tests on what kind of hot water I needed or preheating it. And I found that you didn't really have to preheat it to get it to be a good enough temperature. You lose some temperature of the water once it goes in, but uh, I've tried preheating it using steam and the max temperature I can really get once the water goes in is about 88 degrees Celsius which isn't much different from if you don't preheat it, it ends up being around 82 to 84 degrees Celsius. And then I've compensated by using a longer uh, pre-infusion. So um, usually when I pack the basket, it's a little bit higher and then I don't tamp too hard because I don't want to get channeling. One of the other aspects that I didn't like is that the filter is not bottomless, which means it's hard to diagnose the shot. There is a little plug in there to make it pressurize. I took it out because I don't like that plug. So once I have it on, I, I screw it in. The first time I used it, it didn't screw in easily and, and it didn't stay in. So it just took a little bit of uh, adjusting to, to get worn in. Um, I just used the hot water from my decent espresso machine in this video, but I've used the kettle from the fellow kettle. I've used boiling water from a pot. I've used water, boiling water from a microwave. And I feel like I can get good results with all of them. Um, and because you have this uh, temperature grading uh, downwards throughout the shot, you end up with a shot that is usually smoother than on a regular machine because of that temperature decline, similar to what you would get on a flare or compresso. Additionally, you can also use cold water and do a cold brew, which I thought was really helpful when you're on the road. It's something I've done with flare, I've done with compresso. So I, I pump it a few times to get um, out the first couple drops and I try to, to be a little slow about sending water through so I don't create a channel. So I'm gonna cut over real quick to show what the shower screen does when you don't have a basket underneath and the water can come down the center when doing lower pressures. It says a bit better once you do higher pressures and apparently once the basket is pressurized then it does just fine. But I thought it was important to point this out and I 
really thought this would be a bigger problem than it was, but it turned out not to be. So now I'll just get back to the shot itself where I'm still pushing water through to get to the first couple of drops. So I do a long pre-infusion and I just sped this up by a factor or two because I hold it there for quite a bit. And you got a couple drips out. And then I just do a slow profile. The machine is supposed to go up to nine bars, but I found that a lower pressure and a lower flow gives a higher extraction, especially for a shorter shot. So this shot was like a 1.5 to one ratio output to input. Um, so it's a lot shorter than you typically would, but the extraction yield was around 20%. Um, so here I just measured it, the um, TDS. So if you take TDS, which is total dissolved solids, you multiply that by the output and then divide that by the input weight, you get the extraction yield a good extraction yield is between 18 and 22% in most cases. And I personally prefer to get a high TDS and a high extraction yield at the same time. I also sped up this video at this portion just because it can take like a minute for the Otago to make a me measurement. So this comes out to 14 point seven, eight, and with, uh, oh, I ended up 19 grams in, so it's a lot shorter. It's like a 1.3 to one ratio and about a 20% extraction yield.